Folks, this is Jim from the Possum Channel. I'm watching this show where Trump is going to build a wall, uh, con the people, and take over them, and win their money and their horses and everything. I'm not talking about Donald Trump. I'm talking about a predictive programming done in 1958 uh, on a show called Track Down the End of the World. Now, this is amazing, folks. They put this person called Trump, and he tries to con the people and tell them that by midnight, the world will come by a comet. The end of the world will come by the means of a cow. And now you're gonna run for president. Don't you think that's a really cool idea, you guys? You'll keep them honest. You'll keep them honest, Donald. Personally, I hope you win because I can't wait for the uh, assassination. I mean, the inauguration. And because I can't wait for the. Uh, so, th have you heard this story lately? Have you? Have you? You know? Yeah. Does this like ring a bell? You know, a little. Okay, so I'm gonna leave you with this show, and I hope you connect the story and the dots. Not very difficult. Be before January 20th, share this message right away. This is going to happen. Supposedly. On Come forward, friends. Step forward. I bring you a message, a message few of you will be able to believe, a message of great importance, a message I alone was able to read in the fires of the universe. But be not afraid, my friends. I also bring you the means with which to save yourselves. Save us from what? From the end of the world, friend, which I don't expect you to believe. But the rest of you, those who want to be alive tomorrow morning, I will tell you tonight. Remember that. Bring your friends here. I'll tell you tonight so that you will be able to prepare. What are you selling, Mr. Snake Oil? The world will come to a flaming end at midnight tonight. Without my help and knowledge, every one of you will be dead. He's gone. Mister. Why? Just order, that's all. Comes midnight tonight, this whole town's gonna be dust. Nothing but rocks and dust. Go ahead and laugh. Everybody else is. Everybody. coming to an end. Uh, how's that? Midnight tonight, the whole caboodle's gonna burn up. Oh. Where'd you get that? Fellow back there. For the one with the hat on? Mm-mm. Other one. He says the world is gonna come to an end? Midnight tonight. Where's he from? Drove in this morning. Wagon out front. Mm -hmm. Got a name? Trump. I bet it fits. Anybody in town know him? Mm-mm. But they're all willing to believe what he says. Well, they're not gonna stop up their ears. He's supposed to give us the whole story tonight. Well, I don't believe I'll wait till then. Excuse me. That folks back there think they're like... Well, do they know what's going to happen? Oh, some of them. They've been told. Yeah. Yes, sir. Good morning. Right. Well, we got a ranger with us. How are you? I'm Sheriff Farrell. How are we going? Something special bring you down here? I'm on my way back to Porter. Oh, I heard they sent for somebody. Too bad about the sheriff down there. Well, something happened to him? He died. Oh. Well, would you care to join us, Mr. Uh, uh, Gilman? Yeah, that's right. Thank you. Planning to remain in town for long? 
Well, I understand I have until midnight. And you've heard. Yeah, I heard. Uh, your name is Trump? Dr. Walter Trump. D-U-M-C-S-S-R. Well, that's a whole bunch of letters. Just a few of the degrees that have been conferred on me. Uh, would you mind uh, running through them again for me? D.U. is Doctor of Universe. M.C. Master of Cometry. S.S.R. Student of Stellar Reactions. Well, how do you figure that the world is uh, going to end? Well, that's really quite simple. According to my calculations, tonight, November 14th, the Earth will either collide with or come into close proximity to a comet. In any event, the outcome will be disaster. A cosmic explosion will end all. But the end may come by other means. Now, how do you see it? By means of this. Uncounted millions of these. This is a meteorite. Iron ore from out of space. They will rain on the Earth like pepper on an egg. Each one red hot, traveling at speeds in excess of millions of miles an hour. Molded by their passage into unstoppable bullets. But uh, you can stop them, huh? I can, sir. And I will. See, they are drawn to the Earth by a force that we call gravity. I have discovered how to repel that force. By doing that, I can save this town. Well, how? By means of a force repeller. You sell these force repellers? You have a very suspicious mind, sir. All right, Sheriff, how long are you going to put up with this? What do you mean? How long are you going to let this con man walk around town? Be careful, son. I can sue you. How about it, Sheriff? When are you going to put the lid on? What for? Well, stealing is stealing, whether you do it with a gun or a mouth full of mealy words. I don't intend to sit here and be insulted, Sheriff. If your people don't want my help, I can go elsewhere. Wait a minute, Mr. Trump. You don't talk for the rest of us. Can you prove he's wrong? Well, no, not right now, but if you give me some time... Well, that's something we don't have very much of. According to him. Yeah, well, let me tell you something. Right now, it's a lot safer to go his way than it is yours. Well, how did you get to be sheriff? Look, this is not a suggestion. It's an order. Move on. Bobby didn't know what Trump's pitch was going to be. He was sure of one thing. It was going to cost the people of Talpa. Since the sheriff wouldn't stop Trump, Bobby had to find somebody who would. Sheriff Chet Farrow was the gun law in Talpa, and Judge Clement was the book law. It was to the judge that Ranger Gilman now turned. Yes, Judge Clement? That's right. My name is Hobie Gilman. I'd like to talk to you. Well, come on in. Sit down. Yes, Can I get you anything? No, thank you, sir. Are you here about Trump? Yes, sir. What are you going to do about him? What do you want me to do? Stop him. From what? From taking the town. Can you prove that that's what he has in mind? Well, it's obvious. <laughs> but can you prove it? In order to arrest him, the sheriff has to have a charge. And Trump hasn't given him a thing to go on. What side are you on? The law. Oh, I know how you feel. Maybe I agree with you. But the law is the law. It's got to be kept. What if I take him? On what charge? Fraud. Don't you see? He's not exactly guilty of fraud. Well, what about the meteors and the comet and all whatnot? You might not like it, Mr. Gilman, but he's right. There could be a meteor rain tonight. The Leonids are due. The what? The Leonids. It's a shower of meteors. There's a book about it around here someplace if you want to look at it. No, thank you, sir. I'll take your word for it. Bob. Look here, son. I live here. I know these people pretty well. And right now, there's nothing in the world could change their minds. And anybody who tries to could end up getting hurt. They're not going to listen. Well, what if he starts a panic? It could happen. Well, sure. <laughs> you might as well try to spit out a forest fire. Well, there's got to be some way to stop him. Well, if there is, I don't know it. Uh, it's a funny thing. Sir? When we were kids, we were all afraid of the dark. And we grew up, and we weren't afraid anymore, but... It's funny how a big lie can make us all kids again. Hobie had checked the town. The people were ready to believe. Like sheep, they ran toward the slaughterhouse. And waiting for them was the high priest of fraud. I am the only one. Just me. I can build a wall around your homes that nothing will penetrate. What do we do? How do we save ourselves? You ask, how do you build that wall? You ask, and I'm here to tell you. This is your saving. This is your wall. 
You mean that thing is going to save a whole town? Don't laugh, friend. Please don't laugh. It's the markings. It's the magnetic force that is called up by these markings that will care for your loved ones. How about our cattle? You got something for them? They have not been forgotten. This is a very rare metal, friends. Mined by ancient Indian women in the heights of the Andes Mountains. It's in Peru, South America. Then it's taken to the secret smelters of old Montezuma, where it's refined and compounded until it becomes magnetium, the embryonic source of the universe. The force repeller is for you, and this little disc, by its mere presence, will care for your animals. How can we get one of those? I understand your anxiety, my friend. The thought of death falling from above is not a pleasant one. You're a liar, Trump. You're not going to be in rain of fire. Can you deny the meteorites will come? Can you deny the comet? Well, it's not going to happen the way you say it is. If it were not for my magnetium, friends, those meteorites would be bombarding us this very instant. Look! Look up there! You can see them! By the billions, you can see them! There's another one. They're all over the place. Man, it's a fake. There's nothing up there. You're seeing what you want to see. There's nothing up there. One moment. I hope to convince you without this. That man now has made it impossible. This is no longer under my protection. It was my plan to give you the force repellers free. But now that one of you has doubted me, there will be a charge. Uh, how much, Mr. Trump? $50 a piece. Mr. He ain't one of us. We don't even know him. Please. It's a lot of money, Trump. It'll go up with every word. Well, where are your meters? They will come. Well, maybe you're right, but we could, uh, we could die of old age standing around waiting for them. $75. Why don't you keep your mouth shut, mister? Nothing is going to happen. The man is a fake, a phony. Can't you see that? He hasn't got any control of meteorites or anything else. I don't have very many folks, and they're $75 each. Don't, don't waste your money. It's a fake. Can't you see that? Yeah. Haven't you said enough already, mister? Now get out of here before somebody kills you. Here, give me one of those. The price was high. For many of the people of the town, it was out of all reason. And so they tried to find another way. Pieces of silver and furniture carried from homes in the east were uncovered. Vessels of family pride were polished to be offered in exchange for the force rebellion. Take it easy, folks. Mister, I ain't got the money. Will you take this? It's worth more than 75. Oh, no, just hard cash. That junk's no good to me. There you go. Please, mister, please. No, sir, you get the hard cash, you get the force repellent. Get out of the way, would you, son? There you go. seen mob panic before, and always he'd been able to stay out of its way. He didn't intend this time to be any different. He stood quietly and watched the mob grind along the street. He couldn't help but think that Trump had been right. Talpa wouldn't be standing in the morning. Sheriff, are you still here? I'm breaking into the bank. What do you want me to do about it? Well, I don't know, but you can try something. Look, mister, maybe you're a hero. I'm not. All right, Farrah, take off the badge. Are you telling me what to do? No, not me, the state of Texas. Now, 
going to give you 10 seconds to clear this room, and I'm going to start shooting. We need the money in there. Well, you're not going to get it. We got our families to think about. Tomorrow morning, they won't even look at you. They'll be too ashamed. Get the banker. He can open the safe. <laughs> shoot at him and they wouldn't buy the bluff. I just got careless. Trump's sure having his way. Most of the people in town have got those umbrellas and he's still got 20 minutes till midnight. <laughs> and when the town doesn't burn down, who's gonna get the credit? They had no way of knowing it, but Trump didn't want the credit. He had what he did want. The town's money and a fresh horse. Hobie had been ready to give up. If Talpa didn't want his help, he wasn't going to stand against it. But with the judge's words pushing at him, the ranger decided to have one more try at stopping the entire affair. In order to do it, he had to find the con man before he left town. Aren't you going to stay for the fireworks? Huh? Looks like you're going to go before everything's done. I've done all I can for Talpa. Figure it's time for me to be moving on. Well, I think you ought to wait. It's where you and I disagree. You're under arrest, Trump. What charge? Well, you write it any way you like. Grand theft, fraud, I think a jury will find it stealing. How do you expect to prove it? You and I are going to be right here after midnight. Ranger, there must be a couple few things that you don't have because maybe they're a little too expensive. I suppose I was to give you, say, a quarter of this. It'd be just about $1,250. Huh? <laughs> I'll go up to half. 2500 I could live almighty good on $2,500 anywhere in the country. 2500 Just for getting here, say, 15 minutes too late. Help yourself. I'll take it all, Trump. Opposite sides of that rope. We could have worked good together. You're gonna go back and tell him, Trump. What? You're gonna go back and tell him it's a fake. That those parasols wouldn't keep him dry and heavy do. <laughs> oh, not me. You did a good job working him up into this mood, and I don't see you talk your way out of it. Give me a break, Ranger. Like the one you gave the town? Move. Stand right there, Ranger. I knew you'd get me out of this. Sure, that's why you were leaving without telling me. Well, you don't believe that. I was on my way when the ranger stopped me. Oh, well, you were, huh? You don't think I'd lie, do you? You don't want an answer to that. No, I don't need you now. Every minute you're alive, my neck's in trouble. I know those saddlebags. I'll take them. Look, ranger! It's just you and me. Look, we'll tell them we couldn't find the money. I know where it is. I know you and Trump are in it together. Look, you can't prove a thing. Oh, where are you taking me? Back to Trump's wagon. You're going to tell the truth. They'll kill me, sure. It won't make much difference, will it? Huh? Well, the world's going to come to an end in five minutes. <laughs> Hobie took the sheriff back to the mob. He confessed his part in the fraud. There was no way he could deny it. Hobie explained how Trump had set fire to the wagon, a piece of phosphorus that ignited in the temperature of the air. They wanted to believe Gilman, but they still weren't over the hump. He had to find one crack in their fear, one place to start breaking through. Until the crowd knew that everything Trump had said was a lie, there was no hope for Talpa. The confidence man would always get the credit for saving the town. As long as the parasols were up, Trump was still believed.
you did, Hobie. I didn't think you would. Still standing. You know, watching you talk, looking at them. It was just one thing that bothered me. If you'd have been wrong, I didn't have a parasol. Folks, this is Chen from the Impossible Channel. I'm watching this show where Trump is going to build a wall, uh, con the people, and take over them, and win their money and their horses and everything. I'm not talking about Donald Trump. I'm talking about a predictive programming done in 1958 uh, on a show called Track Down the End of the World. Now, this is amazing, folks. They put this person called Trump, and he tries to con the people and tell them that by midnight, the world will come by a comet. The end of the world will come by the means of a cow. And now you're gonna run for president. Don't you think that's a really cool idea, you guys? You'll keep them honest. You'll keep them honest, Donald. Personally, I hope you win because I can't wait for the uh, assassination. I mean, the inauguration. Because I can't wait for the. Uh, so, th have you heard this story lately? Have you? Have you? You know? Yeah. Does this like ring a bell? You know, a little. Okay, so I'm gonna leave you with this show, and I hope you connect the story and the dots. Not very difficult. Be before January 20th, share this message right away. This is going to happen supposedly. On Come forward, friends. Step forward. I bring you a message, a message few of you will be able to believe, a message of great importance, a message I alone was able to read in the fires of the universe. But be not afraid, my friends. I also bring you the means with which to save yourselves. Save us from what? From the end of the world, friend, which I don't expect you to believe. But the rest of you, those who want to be alive tomorrow morning, I will tell you tonight. Remember that. Bring your friends here. I'll tell you tonight so that you will be able to prepare. What are you selling, Mr. Snake Oil? The world will come to a flaming end at midnight tonight. Without my help and knowledge, every one of you will be dead. <laughs> Keep riding, mister. Why? Just don't.